dedicated. Uh, okay. King of Kings. Dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, stand on the Bible, it's predicated. Been in tall, spirit elevated. I love with the word that hey. activated. Uh, dedicated, Woo. dedicated, uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated. Uh. King of Kings is my Elohim, it's the most high, yeah. Uh, we want to first start by giving him Abba all the honor, all the glory, hallelujah, because if it wasn't for his perfect plan that he has set up, uh, all of us will be destined for the lake of fire. But he has set up a plan uh, of salvation to lead us back um, to paradise, hallelujah, where we can reign with him and fellowship with him. Uh, today's lesson. Hallelujah. Today's lesson is Yahweh Shai the Lamb, part three. Joyful servant. Um, we're gonna get into how we're gonna see how that word servant, well, a slave. Let me say that. We're gonna see how this word slave, because you look in the Bible, it's only two times this word slave is actually written out. That's in Jeremiah and Revelation, Jeremiah 2:14 and Revelation 18. Somewhere around, I think, like maybe fifth verse, or something like that. But the word slave in itself is also used with words like bondmaid, bondwoman, man, a bond servant. Okay. Um, also servant. We're going to get into this word today to understand that um, we are to be prisoners and slaves of our king the messiah you either a slave to the messiah or you're a slave to hashatan there's no in between hmm. so we're gonna get in, into that today um and i understand that the word slave in our minds it can bring a, a bitter thought and rightfully so when it's done uh we, we think about the, the atrocities of slavery how the wicked have, uh, uh, have used slavery in the past and also today. But according to the kingdom, when we understand that a slave, uh, the point of a slave, you have no rights. You give up all your will to fulfill the will of your master. So we're going to get into that today. Joyful slave is the subtitle. Hallelujah. Let's pray in. Bible, we thank you right now for waking us up this morning. We ask you to continue just to bless us, hallelujah, with your wisdom, with your grace, with your mercy, with your love. We thank you for your son, our king, Yahweh, who, who you sent to this earth, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you sent to this earth because you were selfless. You sent to this earth that we can have a way back to you. You, you were inside the Messiah, reconciling us back to yourself, hallelujah. And we thank our king, our master, for being obedient to your word. Hallelujah. Because he is the ultimate bond servant who gave up his, his will in order to satisfy you. He left us a perfect example of how we should do this. So we thank you, our king, our master. We ask you to continue just to be long-suffering with us, long-suffering with us, continue to guide us. We ask the Holy Spirit to continue to bring us to all truth. Hallelujah. We pray for our, 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 the ones who are around us right now, our family members and friends who may be walking wayward. Hallelujah. Contrary to this word, we pray that just as you brought us, you would bring them. We pray for a covering and a protection. But let us not compromise your word because many people that will start off won't finish. No matter who it is, let us, hallelujah, the remnant, Continue to walk this walk. We thank you and we love you. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. First Corinthians 1.10, before we start, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing 
and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. Um, man, so let's start in Genesis 9. Let's go to Genesis 9. We'll start it off in Genesis 9 just to get an understanding or to come to understanding, should I say. Genesis 9, 25. Let me pull the scrolls up to you. I started at 24, coming down to 25. It says, and Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, curse be Canna, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. So let's take a peek at this word. This word here. And I'll put it up on the screen as well. The word here. And for those who don't have the strongs, I'm gonna put it up, but if somebody can uh put it in the chat for the ones who want to follow along or write it down, you can look it up in your spare time. That word there, servant in verse 25 is H5650. It's a bed, okay? I'm gonna pull it up so we all can see it. Hold on here. Give me one moment here. Hallelujah. Hmm. Let me do it. There we go. There we go. Okay, we see that word there. Strong's H, 5650. Evid, Evid. Okay, let's look at some of the definitions of it. Hallelujah. Put it up here. What is it? Slave, servant, slave, servant, man, servant, subject, servant, worshipers of God. But the point I want to see, uh, look it down, look further down. It says a servant. Can people see the screen or do I need to make it bigger? I'm not sure. Can y'all see that? Or the small? It is small. We can't see it. It is small, but some people can make it bigger on their own. I'm not sure if everybody can, though. Okay. If you can't make it bigger, bigger on your own, let me know. I'll try to make it bigger. But if you can't. Uh, is all good, but it says a servant, bondage, bond man, bond servant. Okay. Uh, hold on here. Yeah. Did someone put that in the chat? If not, it's all good. But I just want to pull that word out first. Let me go back here. So we see that uh, Canna, the son of Ham, was supposed to be, it says serving here, but it, it, it is a little deeper than the serving. He was going to be like a slave to the brethren. Okay. Um, let's look at this root word while we're here. Let's see here. Let me pull this up. H 5647. Let me pull this up. And we're going to go ahead and get into this thing here. H5640, H5647 is the word abad. Let me let, let me Strong. Let, hold on. Strong's H5647. Abad. Abad. Okay. Abad. This word here is to work, serve. All right to labor, work, to do work, to work for another, serve another by labor, to serve as subjects, to serve God, to serve with Levitical service, okay? Look at this, to be work, to till of land, to be made oneself a servant, okay? Now, let's go to Genesis 2. 
Go back to Genesis 2. And we're going to just read verse 5. It says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not called it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Okay? When you pull up that word till, that word till there, and I want us to remember these, we're going to go to two. We're going to go to verse 2 and verse 15. We're going to look at the word till and the word dress. Okay? The word till here is going to be important a little later on. Hold on. Hallelujah. The word here is H 5647. That's that word we just pulled up, right? It is uh Abba. Okay. Let you know that word till there is tied to uh the bond man and bond servant, husband, husbandman also. All right. Look down at this word dress, because he also told him to dress and keep the garden. That's in verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. That word dress there is H5647, the same word, okay? So with this understanding, we must know that Adam was a bond servant a slave in the garden. And let me say this. Did Adam, did Adam make any rules up in the garden or was he just to follow the rules that was set up in that garden? Let me ask that question just to get us on one accord. Did Adam make any rules or was he put there to follow rules? He was put there to follow rules. Okay. Now, You don't have to answer this, but just think about it. Was he paid? Was he hired to work? Was he hired to work? He wasn't hired, he was created. Okay, so <laughs> what's the difference between a servant and a slave? So we're going to open these scriptures up. We're going to see it clear as day. I would say that a servant is hired and a slave is owned. Perfect. Now, a slave is also considered a servant. But understand, the one of the big difference between the slave and the servant. Give me some differences that you think is between the slave and the servant. Let's let, let, let's work this together. Give me some differences on what you think the difference is between a, a slave and a servant. Uh, the harsh conditions. Hold on, hold on, uh, Tom. Let's go. Let's go. For, let's get uh, a coach Mitchell in there. She was lit up first. Go ahead. I was just, I was just gonna say choice. One you do freely, and then one you're kind of um, compelled to do. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. I think I heard Tone say something, but but go ahead, bro. I think you said a key point. Yeah, I, I think the harsh conditions. I think um a servant is uh pretty much like they're compensated fairly, and a slave would not be uh compensated as fairly, uh and they'd be working under harsh conditions. Okay. Okay. Let's go with uh a Koti Regina. I see Ima, a Koti Regina. Hi. Um, I was thinking along the same lines. Slavery is involuntary, and um, that. yeah, that's an involuntary servitude versus a service where you're you're doing it because of your own volition and will. Beautiful. This is going to be good. This is about to be good. Uh, Ema, go ahead. What you had? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. There is a difference in the fact that a slave is re is required. You're mandated to do it without even even if you don't want to. Whereas a servant is has a willing desire to do it, to serve, and they have a choice in whether they do it or not. 
Okay, okay. Uh, Kuti Mitchell Lee, you have something else? I think expectation has um, a role to play in that as well. Um, I think a, sla um, a servant expects to be compensated, but a slave doesn't. But at the same time, I think um, from a biblical perspective, it's really the same thing because we are called to make ourselves slaves to um, Messiah and we are servants and slaves. So I think it's, it's both when it comes to biblical principles. Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah, beautiful input. Okay, um, before we read it, was Hagar a slave or a servant? She was a servant and, and well, she wasn't a slave because she was free to leave. So she was a servant. Okay, let's read it. Let's go to Genesis 16. 16 verse 1. I should have asked, did she have a right? Because she have rejected and said, no, I don't want Abraham to come into me. <laughs> Let's see. Here. It says, now Sarah, Abraham's, bear, Abraham's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abraham, behold, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee until my maid, uh, the Strong's, go, uh, go, go into my maid, this, this strong popped up. Uh, go into my maid, it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Okay. Now, she, Hagar was a maid. She was a, 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 a we're going to read it, we're going to see it. She had no choice in the matter, okay? She didn't have a say-so uh, over her own body. She belonged to uh, Sarah, okay? Let's look up this word here, um, handmade. It's 8198. 8198, I'm gonna pull it up so we all can see it here. Hold on here. Let's see here, Zion. Let's see here. The word there. Is eight. Strong's H, 8198. Shifcha. Shifcha. Okay. Now. Definitions of that word, handmaid, maid servant, bond woman, maiden, woman servants, um, maid, maid servant, slave girl, maid, maid servant, as belonging to a mistress. Okay. Now, I also wanted to see something. If you look deep into the definition, it says a female slave as a member of a household, remember that, okay? A, a female slave as a member of the household, okay? Now, hmm, should we do this now? Before we do that, let's, let's go to Genesis 21. Get this other word, bond woman, out of the way. And we're gonna get deep into the lesson. We're gonna get rid of the lesson. Uh, Genesis 21, verse 10, okay? Wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. So when she said the bondwoman had to go, could Hagar say, no, nah, I ain't going nowhere. She had to go. Because who was, who, was, who, who was in charge of that household? Abraham was, but Abraham was Sarah, right? So we know the rest of the story. I'm just wanting to see that word. There's H519. It also lets you know that word means slave. She was a bond, made a bond woman. Okay? Now, this word, 
Yeah, we'll do it now because I want to get to the point. Hold on here. I really want to see this. Because we remember it also a, a slave, right? It's also considered a family member. Okay, it's also considered a family member. And let me go back here. Because a part of this word in age 91, this is where we get our word mish, mishpapa, mishpapa from, right? Which means family, okay? So, so, so understand, and we're gonna see it in the law too. We're gonna see something, we're gonna go to the law, but I want us to get an understanding before we get to the New Testament when you're dealing with the word slave and servant, bond man, bond woman, okay? I want us to get a clear understanding of this before we get to this New Testament. Okay, um, so Hagar was considered a family member, even though she was a, a slave girl. It's very important to, to, to understand. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 15, verse 18. Hagar wasn't getting paid. <laughs> this gonna be good. Verse 15, 18. Hallelujah. All right. Deuteronomy 15, verse 8. Verse 18. It says. We we'll just get into the law a little bit. It shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendest him away free from thee, for he hath been worth a double hired servant to thee, and serving thee six years, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thou that thou doest. Now, re reason why I went here because I just we're gonna go deep into it, but I wanted to see that you had hired servants, and those hired servants was considered slaves, but they were hired. Right, this hired servant, he got paid wages. He could leave anytime he want to leave. Okay, but he was a hired servant. Okay, so you had hired servants, and then you had servants that you bought. We're gonna read all these. You had servants that you bought that belonged to you. The hired servant was just like, let's say, like a butler or something. So, so can a hired servant, he can leave when he want to, it's his option to stay, but he's getting paid. Go to Exodus 12. Forty-four, forty-five. It says, and it's talking about the Passover, right? It says, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant should not eat thereof. So a foreigner or a hired servant cannot partake in the in the Passover, mainly why? They probably weren't circumcised, but more than that, they were not family. Remember, if you belong to the household, you did what the household do. So if you was bought for money, they would do everything to make you a family member. Even though you still was bought with a price, you belonged to them, you became their property, okay? So you can partake in everything. So we see off the bat that the benefits of a of of, of, of a slave over a hired servant of, of, over a hired servant would be more intimacy, more communion. They get to commune with the family. They're closer. A hired servant. 
you're not gonna be that close with them because they just they, 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 they just there to, to do the work they're paid. So you have both are servants, but one one is paid to do the work, and one does the work because that's what he was bought to do. He, he you bought him to do this work. You paid for him to do this work. Who got some? By that definition, then we're all slaves because we're all bought. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we've been bought with a price. We're going to see that th this man, oh, that's why I say this is going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be good because you bought with a price. Matter of fact, let's just read it. Let's just read it. Let's just read it. Let's just read it. Go to Exodus 21. Exodus 21. And let's start at verse, we'll read at verse one. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If the master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters. He shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then the master shall bring him in unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with the anal, like make like a, a hole, right? And he shall serve him forever. So what we have here, that servant here was a slave, but he had an opportunity to go free. But he made a decision to make himself what we would call a bond servant forever. But it's based off that he loved his master. He's now choosing to be a slave forever. It's like I'm choosing to stay under your house rules and do whatever I have to do for free as well. Let me put that in there. We're going to see that too. So this is totally different than a hired servant. I, I really want us to get the, the difference between the slave and a servant. Both of them have the same functions as serving, but one is free to go when he won't. The other has given up all of his rights to serve. See, we got to get out of our mind that, and I know special over here, this is what we think. When you come into Christ, you have a choice. You could do what you want to do. You do have a choice, but you just ain't really in your mind. You ain't gave it all up. You ain't been fully persuaded. That's why people, uh, one minute they acting holy, the next minute they acting unholy. Because they serving two masters. And the Bible says you can't do that. So they let you know you're double-minded. You ain't really, we ain't really made a choice. To be to have our ear bowed, to, 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 to have to be stamped and approved. Still a higher servant. Doing what you want to do. When you when you when you want a blessing, you want to be holy and righteous. Righteous. When you want to get out of trouble, you want to be holy, you want to pray. But then when you want to do what you want to do, you want to be a higher servant. But 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 I want to understand that this particular individual here was free to go, but he made a, a decision that I'm fit to what 
serve you forever. Now, when he's serving him forever, can he do what he want to do? No. House rules is house rules. You made this choice because you said you love me. Are we together so far? Because I really want us to understand this before we get to this New Testament. I'm going to take that as a yes. Let's go to Leviticus 25. See, we've been, like the coach said, we've been bought with a price, but have we made a decision that we're going to uh, 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 be bond servants for life? Because what the Messiah done, look, and it happened in Egypt too, right? He he paid a price to, to get him out of Egypt, just like he paid a price to get us out of sin, right? But when they got out of Egypt, right, they was free. They was free. But see, they had to make a decision that they was going to serve Abba forever by being obedient to the Messiah in that wilderness. But what they decided to do, some of them with their freedom even decided, they, they made it their mind, they wanted to go back to Egypt. What you going to do with your freedom? What you going to do with the, what you going to do with your freedom? <laughs> Oh, uh, what are we going to do with our freedom? Leviticus 25, 39. I'm free. I got what that son of a girl touched the car. That son's all free. You free, but what you gonna do with your freedom? Uh, 39. It says, If thy brother that dwelleth by thee white poor, and he be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, but as a hired servant, and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee and shall serve thee until the year of Jubilee. So I'm going here just to show. That once you accept the Messiah, he, he does he, he does free from sin, give you the opportunity to repent, and these type of things, but then you have to make a choice. What was Adam and Eve free agents in that garden? They were free agents in that garden. They Go ahead, go ahead. Somebody got me. Go ahead, go ahead. Who got some? I was going. To, I was going to say no. They weren't free agent um, agents. They had rules that they had to follow. Good point. They had rules they had to follow, but they still were free agents to make their own decisions. Yeah. This is what I wanted to get us to understand. We've been bought with a price, but you still you got to be like that servant who said, "Look." Even though I'm free to go, I'm going to make a decision to be here for life. But I understand that I have to follow the house rules. This is why they got kicked out. Because they knew the house rules, but they made a decision to do what they wanted to do. And when they were supposed to be tilling and dressing the garden, they were supposed to be servants in there, slaves in there. Go, go ahead. I think Emo has something. What you got? No, you had already said it. I was going to say that too. They were free. They just had to follow the rules because they could do whatever they want in the garden. They just were not supposed to do certain things that he were that the Most High had already told them not to do. Correct. See, see, he come to set us free and give us liberty, but there's still house rules. There's still laws and commandments that we must keep. You don't do what you want to do. We're going to get to it. Just trying to, before we get to it, I just want to give us a little bit of background, a little understanding on how this thing is working in the Old Testament. Somebody, I don't know, somebody, I think the coach, yeah, go ahead. It's me. What is the uh, Hebrew definition of the word free? Let's look it up. I have no idea. 
If somebody already got to pull it up, let's pull it up. Let me see here. Hold on. Hallelujah. Give me one moment here. Let's see here. Uh, we would have to go to, we'll go back to Exodus 21. Let's see here. Let me put it up in the strongs. Hold on here. Uh, it's uh, H2670. Let's, let's, let's pull this up. Hold on here. It means to be exempt from bondage, free liberty, um, H2670. Let me pull it up so everybody, oh, she's telling you quick, girl. Good stuff. She already pulled it up. Um, let me see if I can put it this way so everybody can see it. We don't got the scrolls. Hold on here. Give me one moment. Zion. I'm going to pull it up so everybody can see it. What I said, H2670. Hold on here. I'm pulling it up, y'all bear with me. Hallelujah. Let me share the screen here. All right. Let's see. Here. Strong's H2670. Hofshi. Hofshi. Okay. Free. Free from slavery, free from taxes or obligations, uh, exempt from bondage, free in liberty. Okay, so um, so so when 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 you when we say you're a free agent, meaning you you're not obligated to do anything. You choose to follow the rules. You choose to do these particular things. So they had a they, they they had a choice. He told them, "Choose life and death." That's what he always do with us. He, he, he does it with us. He's done it in the garden. It's always a choice. Right. I, I definitely agree with that. I don't. I don't. I don't um, believe when people say things like, I, "I had no choice." You always have a choice. Sometimes your choices are between two bad things, but you get to choose, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm having a little problem processing the idea of, of, of um, being free as, as, you were, um, as you're defining it. So I, I kind of have to sleep on that one for a bit, but I, yeah. can, I think I'm coming from the, um, from the uh, dictionary definition of free, being un, unfeathered, not attached to anything. And I, I guess I kind of think of it as being able to do whatever you want, whether it is to obey or disobey Yahweh then that makes you free. And that's how I kind of been processing freedom. But what you're saying is something different. So I'm trying to reprocess it <laughs> no from a different perspective. I will so say thank you for that. What you're saying, I, I, I believe we like saying the same thing. You, you are free to do what you want to do, right? Because the enemy can't make you do nothing and, and y'all can't make you do nothing. So you have total freedom on what you do with your life. The, the issue is you only got two, you, you only have two choices. Either you choose life or death. You don't get to choose, you get to choose your choice, but there's only two choices for you to choose from. Either choosing to serve Yah or choosing to serve the devil. But it's your, it's our decision. And every day that thing play out. Every, every hour. It, I'll say this and we'll move on. We can't think of thoughts. Thoughts come come to us to think on, right? You don't have a choice of what thought come to you, but you have a choice whether you're going to think on that thought or do what? Cast it down. No one can wake up and say, you know, I'm not going to think of certain stuff today. Now, thoughts come to you, but when those thoughts come to you, guess what? Our, our, he, he, he already told us, to cast that thing down or think on things above. Matter of fact, hallelujah, if we 
concentrate on thinking on things above, we probably get less of those uh, bad thoughts. But me, myself, personally, I have been in meditation. Boy, I've been praying, and some of the craziest things don't came to my mind. And I don't know, maybe we can get to a level where we can, none of those thoughts won't come. But uh, I'm just saying those thoughts come, but it's up to us to either think on them or cast them down. But let's, uh, how we pull this bike up here? Uh-oh. There we go. So, so, so. We, we, let's go to second, let's go to second Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 8. This is why, man, he, he, sometimes I don't know if we really fully understand that uh, he, he's just like us in a sense. He wants to be desired, right? He wants to know that you choose him, not that that you're put in a situation where you it is no option, right? He wants to be sought after. Second Corinthians eight nine. We're gonna get in the Messiah for the perfect example of a of a slave bond servant. It says, uh, for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. So it says, he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty may, might be rich. Go to Philippians 2. See how he done this. Hallelujah. Uh, let's start at verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, though thought it not, not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Let's look this word up here in the New Testament, this word servant. And this is a very interesting word, Zion. Because anytime you look this word serving up, you're going to get this word. Let's see here. Do those. I'm going to pull it up, though. Hallelujah. Uh, okay, here we go. Strong's G, 1401. Dulos. Dulos. So definitions for that is bond made, bond man, sorry, a slave, a man of servile conditions, a slave. Watch this. Who gives himself up to another's will. Those who serve is used by Christ and extended and advancing, uh, advancing his cause among men. Devoted to another to disregard of one's own interests. A servant and attendant. A slave. All right? So, we see the Messiah. Let's read this again. It says that, read verse 7 again. But made himself of no reputation. Verse five again, that's yeah. Answer, let, again. Verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, right? Who being in the form of God, though it not robbery, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, right? 
do, do, do we have the mind of the Messiah? The, the key is your mind, right? That's 100% true. The key of your mind. But are you willing to serve your mind or, he, or, or the mind that he's going to put in you, his mind? And talk is cheap. Because your actions is going to show what mind you're serving. It says, uh, verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him upon him the form of a servant the form of a slave a bondman that's what he done and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross and we're going to see later on that we're going to we're going to see it right now you are required to do the same thing for others If you're going to follow his footsteps. And that's what the bird is saying. For the following his footsteps. Let's go to John. John 17. Matter of fact. That was the whole point of Israel. You go right to that Genesis 18. 18. But we ain't going to deal with that today. We're going to deal with this. John 17. Let's see something here. Um, we'll start at verse, start at verse one. You see the whole process from second Corinthians to Philippians to right here. Cause it says that he, that he was rich, but he became poor that we could become rich. Huh? These words break Jesus and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me, okay? So he said, I finished the work that thou hast given me. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So he had, he was already rich. He had a glory right before, but as we read earlier, just now he, he, took, he, he, he took off that to come down here, okay? But now he's saying, hey, let me get that bite. Okay, this is how he became, uh, 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 gave up rich, the, the richness of, of heaven, being with the Father to come down here for us, right? That we could become rich and have be partakers with the Father. But it says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Dying that they were, sorry, dying that were, and thou givest them me, and thou hast kept thy word. Now they have known that all, all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou hast given me. And thou have received them and, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they believe that thou did send me. So this man, and, and actually this is a prayer. But understand, he, he, is, he is, he's letting us know. A lot right here. He, he's action of father. You know, give me the glory that I had when I was with you. Okay. I've done the work. I finished the work, right? That you've given me. He's let us know he 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 did not he did not come to do his own will. He did not come to say what he wanted to say. And we know he had a will. He was in the garden of Gethsemane. He not the garden of Gethsemane. He had the will. He said, Not my will, but let your will be done. Hmm? He chose to humble himself to fulfill the work of Abba. But let's see some here. 
Let me read down. Let's read on down. We'll run right into it. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, it's verse 9, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are, are mine, and I'm glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those who thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that they should, watch this, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into this world, even so have I also sent them into the world. So the same way he was sent in the world to do this work, he's now going to send his disciples in the world to do the same work. But we're to have the same mind that he had when he done the work. So when he done the work, did he do what he wanted to do? Did he say what he wanted to say? Or did he do what the father commanded him and say what the father commanded him? He done exactly what the father commanded him and only said what the father said. And now he's sending us to do the work. So we got to follow his footsteps. Hmm? Let me read verse 19. And we're going to go to verse 15. We're going to go to chapter 15. It says, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. So when he was sending disciples out, the disciples was going out to make the disciples and the people were supposed to believe on the disciples from their word. It's going to lead back to the Messiah, which is going to lead back to the Father. So the word is supposed to be the same. All the disciples are supposed to be speaking the same thing even today. Let's go to John 15, verse 14. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question. Um, Let's see, 15, 14, hallelujah, okay. Um, yeah, I'll start, let's get to the point. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So I asked my wife a question last night. I said, if someone come up to you and say, you my friend, only if you do what I command you to do. What would, what kind of person you think that would be? If somebody come to you and say, look, you my friend, but only if you do what I command you to do, what would you say? Y'all talk to me. If somebody came to you and say, look, I want to be your friend, but only if you do what I tell, only if you do what I command you to do, what would you say? We're not friends. Well, I I I I say no, we are not friends. That's okay. I don't need you as a friend. Go ahead, Coach Eventually. <laughs> I concur. I think our dean lit up. Uncle Willie, what you said? What you got something? I thought he had lit up. I didn't know him, Mr. Willie. What did she say? She concur. Oh. Okay. Uh so check it out. The Messiah is saying, ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So, so what is that saying if you're going to be his friend? What do you have to do? 
whatever he says to do, well, that's okay because he's God. So I'm gonna do it. Go ahead and go ahead and well, give it to me. <laughs> I think it's a different level of it's a different level of intimacy. That's with the understanding that we're already his servant, that we're already in his his slave, and now he's gonna give us a, a upgrade, so to speak. It's, it's upgrade, definitely upgrade. So we're gonna go into right. It's definitely an upgrade, right? Watch this. Just tell it. Somebody else got something? No. That was. It was just me, cause you know I'm. I'm one of those. You got to read the before and after, you know. So yeah, I. You. You're saying I can be. You. I, you're gonna be my friend as long as you do what I tell you to do. But there was. There was a before, and then there's an after to that comment. So yeah, it depends on what's what's being said in the between. And, you know, before then and after that. Okay. So, so check this out. I, I would say. Go ahead. It's good. Sorry. Sorry, bro. I was just going to say, I would, it would depend on who said it. <laughs> you know, I Ima, agree. if you said it, I might, I might consider it. But if Joe yeah. off the street said it, I'd be like, uh, no. <laughs> exactly. And I feel the same. If you said it, I'd be like, okay, well, let, where are we going with this? But if someone else I don't know said it, no. Uh uh. <laughs> we had this little thing here last night. So look, so check it out, right? Let's understand this. And, and you, everybody's right, right? But we're going to get a full, hope to get a full understanding on how this thing could work out. Because at this time, he only knew them for like two, two years, two and a half years, right? Now, yeah, he had done a whole bunch of miracles. They don't see that work. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? But remember, uh, what the, uh, the young rich ruler, right? We're we gonna get into that in a minute. Let, let's let's just stay right here, all right? Let's stay right here. It says, um, oh man, this is good. Look, <laughs> ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, right? I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. What I want to do real quick, I want to show that because sometimes people see this, or I've heard it taught that we ain't servants no more, we're not slaves no more, we're friends. But we're going to show that this is just an upgrade, right? Or uh, to being a slave. Remember, remember early we read. You had hired servants, and then you had uh, uh, bond servants. Which one were able to eat with the family? Which one was considered a family member? The hired servant or the bond servant? The hired servant. Uh-uh. It was, it was I'm, the, I'm it was sorry, the, not the hired, this, the bond servant. Right, right. The hired servant, even though both of them were serving in the house doing the same duties, you could be in the house, both of y'all got the same... Uh, title has been doing servitude, but one has a, a a more how can I put it? one is family. One can go eat. One can eat with the family. One servant can't. The other servant can. Okay. This is very important because uh, let, let, let's see something here. Because just because he's calling you friend, he's not saying that you no more his slave, right? We're going to see this. He's not saying you no more his slave because in order to become a friend, you have to do what? What he's telling you to do. But let, let's go to Revelations 1-1 and we're going to come back. Let, let's see something real quick. I want to get on one core with this friend and slave and servant thing. Because the way we, we, we think a slave, right? Uh, first thing in our mind is somebody whooping you, beating you, and all this type of stuff, right? But when you become a slave to righteousness, we're going to read that later on too. A slave to Messiah, that means, hey, you ain't got to worry about nothing. He's going to take care of you all the way, but you're going to have to do what he tell you to do. You don't listen to your own mind. Okay? If you if you his friend. But let's get to this. Revelations 1.1. 1, 1. Somebody, hold on. Let's see here. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God <laughs> Hey man, y'all funny. Oh, I just thought of something y'all said. Look, revelations, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God has given unto him. 
to show unto his servants things which must certainly come to pass. And he sent his uh and, and he sanctified it by the his angels unto his servant John. Go to Amos 1. Just want to make sure we understand the servant. A friend is still a servant. If I don't heard people say, well, when he don't tell the servant nothing. Now we gotta understand what he's talking about here. Where are we going, John? A A Amos, we're going to Amos, uh, Amos 3, verse 7. I just get the verse, let me put it up. Oh my God. Amos 3, verse 7, I just want to show something real quick. It says, surely the Lord God would do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, so wh whatever he does, he's going to tell it to his servants because his servants are going to do what he's telling them to do. Why are you going to reveal something to you if you ain't going to be no, no slave to him? He ain't just going to tell you something just to tell you. He's revealing stuff to us so we can, we can go to work. Let me pull. Hold on. Here. I thought. Hold on. Here. Oh, my thing on oh, my phone. Okay. So, what happened? Oh, listen. So, um, I, I want us to understand this. Moses was, when you read Exodus 33, it says that he saw God face to face. He spoke to him as a friend. Abraham was called a friend of, of, of God, but then you go to Psalms 105, 42, it tells you that Abraham was the servant. Joshua 1, 1, when you go to Joshua 1, 1, you'll see this is after Moses' death, okay? After his death, he's telling, God is telling Joshua, Moses, my servant, okay? So the reason why I'm bringing this up, because both Moses and Abraham were, were friends of God but they also were servants. And I don't think, it ain't too many people in the earth that uh, that has got things revealed to them like Abraham and Moses. So I want us to, don't get to the mindset where I'm a friend, I ain't a slave no more, because I'm a friend. Now, now it's like some type of buddy thing going on. Like like Messiah, just your homeboy, y'all y'all friends. You, you don't got to listen to him. You don't got to do what he tell you to do. This ain't that type of rodeo. Oh, are we gonna want to call with that? Can I add something to that? Yes. A few things. Um, so, I, of course, um, this is one of the one of the favorite scriptures of mine too. Um, Amos seven, where he doesn't reveal any; he reveals everything to his servants, the prophets. Um, a servant, it, we're servants, like you said, to the to either the to Hasatan or to the Most High. But we serve on our jobs each and every day. We're hired to serve, but we serve. And what I think the problem is with this is when when you start saying slave or servant, because we as a people who have um, the 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 you know the the backstory of the slave ships and all of that and people being in slavery has tainted this word so bad that people don't want to be a servant but when you're serving someone who is protecting you loving you providing for you doing all those things for you you don't mind being a servant and i think that's where we have to get out of the place of not wanting to be you want to serve someone who who is loving you your wife serves you right now and you serve her. We're servants one to another. So why, can, you know, if I think it's just the, the fact that that word, that word was, has been so misused and it's used in such a bad way that people just don't want to be servants. Hallelujah. And that's why we're doing this lesson because I want you to know you're a slave. We slave to the Messiah. This is a trick of the devil. And, and this is another well said to Imam. And I want us to understand this. I want, I really want us to understand what I'm going to say right now. 
Exactly. Trying to hold on to your individuality. I, I really want us to understand this. One of the problems is you don't get to choose who you serve. As far as, let's say the Messiah got to work for you. He may put you in a situation on your job or may get you with a wife or a husband or a friend that he's telling you to be a slave to. He's telling you to serve this person because I want to show myself through you. Okay, so one of the problems is we want to choose who we serve or who we be, who, who we uh, humble ourselves to. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you think the Messiah, the Messiah came to Israel, this was some of the most wickedest people on earth. And he had to come serve our people. Humble himself. So it, 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 we got to get understanding. Sometimes, well, uh, most of the time, you may be put in the situation. You, you don't get to choose who you, who, who you, you are a slave. Hallelujah. We are slaves to the Messiah. A slave only do what he's told. So when he tell you to show love, be patient, be gentle, be meek, you don't get to pick the situation when you get to show his fruit of the spirit. All you're supposed to do is be the light. Be obedient to his word. Go do what he tell you to do. Hmm? Can I bring something out? Yes. Um, as we were talking about being friends, but also being servants, it made me think about the um, relationship and the friendship between um, David and Jonathan and how they were friends, but Jonathan also submitted himself um, in, in a slavely manner to David, even though Saul was the king, Jonathan understood what David's true position was. And even though they were friends, he absolutely submitted himself and served David and told David, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. So that was mm -hmm. a, uh, an example in the Bible of friends. But Jonathan also completely submitted himself to um, David, understanding his position was the true king. Hallelujah. Good stuff. You understand? Uh, Coach Regina put in Colossians uh, 3.23. And whatsoever ye do, do it in heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. This is the truth. This is what it is. Right? But the trick of the enemy is to get us to think, man, what, what reward am I getting out of serving you or being a slave to you? Huh? When you're a slave, you're not looking for no reward. No reward. You've been bought with a price. you here just to do what you told. That's a hard part, a hard, hard pill to swallow. We don't get to pick and choose the situation. We don't get to pick and choose the trial and tribulation we get to go through in order to show forth his glory. You want to be a higher servant. No, I ain't for the, I ain't for the serve that. What am I getting in return for serving that? You know what the Messiah got in return for being, for humbling himself, giving up his riches uh, and coming down here? What did he get in return? I'm, I'm talking about when he was on this earth. He got nothing but disrespect. He got beat. He, 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 he got whooped. He got spit on. Hmm? He got denied by many. But he had a joy that was in him. Hmm? He had a joy that was set before him that kept him going while he was a bond servant in this earth. And that's the mindset we got to have if we're going to be slaves to Christ. We got to have in our mind that he is our joy. He is our reward. I'm doing this unto him. I don't matter. I'm going to, I'm going to make a choice to give up my will in order to serve him forever. Let's, let's go to Matthew 8, 5. Matthew 8, 5. And when Jesus was entering into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of a, a, a palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The satyrian answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy 
that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Verse 9 is why I wanted to see, you wanted us to see. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he do it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. This man understood when you're under authority, you do what you're told. So he understand the word is under authority of the, of the Messiah. He had faith and trust. You send his word, his word going to go do what you tell him to do. But I want us to see in this text right here, basically he's saying, whatever you told to do, that's what you do. When you under authority, when you say you under authority of Hamashiach, when you're under authority of Yahweh Shai, you do what, you, what he tell you to do. You don't have a say so in the matter. It's yea and amen. This is what a slave is. You're not looking for no uh, reward. Your reward is to be a good slave. Deuteronomy 28. Let's show something. Deuteronomy 28, 47. It says, because thou servest not, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. See, because you didn't want to be a servant, a slave to the almighty, he going to send, he sent some enemies on you. Huh? Serve them since you don't want to be joyful and in gladness while, while, while being a servant to me. Hmm? You're going to serve one way or another. It's your choice. When we, under, when we say we're under authority of Hamashiach, we do what he say do. We do what the words say. Let's get these hirelings in here before we wrap it up. Go to John 10. What do you say? Yeah, we're we going to test these hirelings too because we got some hirelings. Um, hirelings been here though. We're going to read that too. Uh, John 10. It says, I'm going to start at verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, right, mean hired help, and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known of, uh, known of me. So a hireling, when times get tough, he going he gonna to bail out. Go to, go to Micah. I'm going to show this ain't nothing new. This, the Messiah walked into this type of situation. Hmm? I know in Israel, you got a lot of uh, more rays want to be banging on the Sunday church. But let me see where this started at. Uh, where these hirelings started at. And they coming out again in full force. And they did some of these money more rays, they, they, they're a little mad because uh, the so-called Sunday church don't perfect it, stealing from the people. They perfected it. But Israel been doing it. Uh, Micah, Micah uh, 3, I'm going to start at verse 4. Check this out. It says, then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doing. Thus the Lord concerned the prophets that, that 
that, my, that make my people err. They bite with their teeth and cry, peace. So they biting and, and study talking about peace, but they really trying to hurt you, right? And he that put it not in their own mouths, they even prepare war against him. Therefore, nigh shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not, watch this, that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall not go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, and of the judgment, and of might, to declare to Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. Hear this, I pray you. This is why I came here to get to verse 11. Hear this, I pray you, ye, ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abort judgment and pervert all iniquity. You good? Hold on, y'all. What's the name? Hallelujah. Let's, uh, we're going to pray um, right now for, uh, hallelujah, Brian Smith. It's G, my grandson. Let, let's pray. Uh, he passed out at a, at a restaurant. So let's let, let's pray. Hallelujah. Abba, right now, in the name of your son, Yeshua, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. For 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 your for, for your word. We we thank you. We know your word is a healing word. We believe that that we're here by your stripes. So right now, Father, we coming together on one accord. We're sending the word right now to our, our brother Brian, Brian Smith, that you heal his body. Not for our glory, but that you may be glorified right now. We, we, we ask for peace for the family right now. Give them comfort. Hallelujah. And we believe in right now on, on a good report, on a blessed report that you have restored them back to health. And, and, and not just restore them back to health in his body, but that you would restore his mind. Hallelujah. Will you, that when he come out of this situation, he would give you the glory and he would change his life or to walk more closer to you. If he's not already walking close to you, he would get even a closer relationship to you right now. And he would give a testimony of your goodness. So we pray for his healing and we pray for peace over the family right now. In the name of your son, Yahshua, we pray for healing right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, we just got word uh, Mother Barbara's son, uh, right. grandson passed out. But we believe him for that good uh, uh, speedy recovery. Hallelujah. Get back to this word. We in uh, Micah three, verse nine. We'll read that again. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You gonna be all right. Let's get it. Micah three nine. Hear this, I pray you, ye heads of the house of Jacob, and and princes of the house of Israel that abort judgment and pervert all e equity. Watch this, man. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. For these, ooh -wee. The heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet would they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us. None evil can come upon us. See this, this they, they don't want to went mad. Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed of the field, and the ruler shall become heaps and the mountain of the house as the high places of the forest. Reason why I went back here, because these were these were hirelings. Huh? The, 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 these teachers, these judges, these prophets, they start doing it for, for money. Huh? They, they, they ain't gonna stand up for the people. They ain't gonna teach the people the truth. They're gonna tell the people they want just to get that bread. It's the same thing going on today. When you're a slave of the most high, when you're a slave of your high was shy, guess what? You ain't doing it for no money. You're doing it because this is what you call to do. Now you know the, the property do is reward, but they ain't what you're doing it for. It's not a pay for pay, pay for pray. You don't set your salary. You know, these crazy mores out here uh, fleecing the people. And it ain't just for the pastors, the prophets. You go out to the singers and the dancers too. 
the musicians too. The people that's so-called teaching Hebrew too. You doing it for money? You want a reward? When you see the Messiah, you pull the following system. When is he demanding a payment for something? Bunch of hirelings out here right now. Go back to um, it's been going on. It ain't just start with the Sunday church. They they just perfected it a little better. But I see them he see them fake Hebrews coming, boy. They trying to perfect that thing, boy. They trying to perfect that 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 that, that teaching for hire. One brother sent me a video. That brother, that dude preaching. Man, you see cash up things, the little things going up all over the place. Disgusting. We do this. We are slaves to the Messiah. We servants to him. We understand the work got to get done. But why are we doing this work? We doing it because we love him. Can't pay me for the word, man. Thanks. Where I left? What was that? Um, John ten. You want to throw that in now? Slave on slave, not a, a, a slave to the Messiah is doing it because he want to do it. He choose to do it. He know what his reward is. Had yeah, some brothers that was with me before we start doing this, man. Only time they come out is when you got that mic on. When you out there doing that work, they ain't coming out. You put that mic on, boy, they ready to be seen. Had to tell a couple of them, sit down, man. <laughs> John, let me finish this. Uh, let me read verse 13 again. And the highland flees because he is a highland and cares not for the sheep. You don't care nothing about the sheep, doing it, for, doing it for that pay. Not a slave to this work. Not a slave for the sheep. Doing it for pay. Romans 1. Could you have paid the Messiah enough to do what he done? And we pull the fall on his footsteps. The script with his red, he don't send us into the world now to do the work. But what are you expecting in return for the work? Listen, and it just ain't money either. Let me say this, because look, we can just deal with the, let's deal with the, the, in your own situations. He could be calling, uh, causing you to do a work, right? He's telling you to do something, but you're looking for something in return. You ain't going to do what he say because you don't see you getting no love bite. You getting no peace back. You getting no joy back. So now you being disobedient. Everybody on here, if he's telling you to do something, if he's commanding you to do something, if you're a slave to him, you must do it. And not expecting to, to, to hallelujah, to, I'm not going to do it unless I see me getting something in return. That ain't the mindset a slave has. A slave mindset is, hey, I don't gave up all my rights, all my will. I'm here just to serve you. And I'm doing it with joy. What you what you got for me, Holy Spirit? Lead and guide me, and I'm going to do what you tell me to do. If we can get this mindset, Zion, it, it, it'll help us in so many different areas because we won't be... Uh, 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 we, you will never get let down. It'd be hard for you to be disappointed because you know everything you're doing it, you're doing it to, uh, to please him. But how many people can put that work in like that? Do we believe what you reap, what you sow? You got to believe that. You reap, you're going to reap what you sow. So you, if you keep sowing love, keep sowing peace, keep sowing joy, keep sowing meekness, it, it got to come back. That's a principle. What did it say? Seed and harvest time? It, it got to happen. 
but we want to see that thing happen in our time. And I get it. I get it. Let's get that. Let me read Romans 1. Then we're going to jump to Romans 6. I just want to read Romans 1.1. 1, 1. Because that word there is doulos again. Anytime you look at that word servant in the Bible, you're going to see that word doulos, which means slave. Okay? I think it's in the over 170, 170, 190 times. Is in the book. Over 180 times. It's slave. You got to go by, you get one of the Geneva Bibles. Them old books, them old Bibles. Get, you, you read one of them, you, you'll see it in there. But it's a Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated from the gospel of God. So it's saying Paul, a servant, a slave of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel uh, of God. Ephesians 3, 1, I think you say call him a prisoner. He's a prisoner. When you're a prisoner, can you go as you please? Can a prisoner just go do what he want to do? But look, hey, hey, Paul is Paul had to get to that point. See, Paul, see, look, Paul was a very educated man, high, highly intelligent, taught by uh, 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 Gamil, uh, from a from a child, great wisdom in the Torah. But see, he had to come under arrest. He had to be, he had to get humbled. Hmm? He, had, he had to get rid of all that stuff that he was taught according to the father's tradition, the man-made doctrine. Not the Torah, the man-made doctrine. He had to get rid of that in order to become a slave to Christ, a prisoner of Christ. Romans 6. Let's start at verse 15. It says, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law? But grace, God forbid, knowing, knowing ye not that to whom ye yield, your, your, ye yield your, yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thank that ye were servants of sin. You were slaves of sin. It's the same word, doulos, there. You were slaves of sin. You know in Genesis, what it is in Genesis when Cain, remember when uh, it told him sin lies the dope? If you do well, but if you don't do well, what's sin going to do? Say sin going to rule over you. If something ruling over you, that means that's your master. That, that the sin gonna have dominion over you. So at one point, all of us sin was our ruler, it was our master. We were slave to it. But be God think that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed. Well, what you obeyed from? You obeyed from the heart. That form, the form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. Because he set you free from, from sin, all right, now we are to be slaves to righteousness. I speak after the manner of man, because of the affirmative of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Become a slave to righteousness and holiness. We call them, we should have played that song, what that Thai tribute song is. Everything when you say master, you call him master. I like that part. Anybody know that song? Ty Tribble, he, 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 like when you say master, your son called everything. He our master. Hmm? What, what do he say? Brother, say Adonai, say Elohim. That sound a little more, that's better. That's a little bit more Hebraic. Master, Lord, 
He's our Lord and Savior. Hmm? He ain't just your Savior. He your Lord. He your Master. But you you have to you have to make a choice to come under His authority to submit underneath to Him. He ain't gonna make you submit. You have to give up your your, your will, give up your desire to make Him your Master. To become a slave to holiness and a slave to righteousness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. See the slave talk. Hmm? For when ye were slaves of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit? Had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed, for the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants, in the word is doulos, slaves of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Man, he don't put the ball into your court. It's all on you what you're going to do. Huh? You can't serve two masters. If, if, if you got a master, that means you come under your master's authority. You know why you can't serve two masters? See, see look, hallelujah. A, a hired servant, a servant, watch this now. A servant, a hired servant can serve two masters. A slave can't serve two masters. But a hired servant can serve two masters. You, some people got a day job, some people got a night job. I mean, they got a, they got two jobs. You got a day job and a night job. Hmm. You serving two masters. You got two bosses. A slave only have one master. Hmm. This one, when he took us out of Egypt, he said, hey, hey, I, 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 you can't be a bomb, bomb man to nobody else. One master. A slave can only obey one master. If you try to obey two, that's what you're going to do. Scripture say you're going you're gonna to make one man. You're going to love one or hate another. That's what it say. You're going to either love one or hate the other. You can't be a slave to two masters. You, 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 we, we, we either all in or we all out. You can try to play both, both if you want to, you out. <laughs> yeah. Are, are we together so far? Hope we together. We slaves to the Messiah. Well, I said, let's read this. Um, let's read this Ephesians 3 1. We're going to get ready to close it out. Because uh, we're going to get ready to close out in a minute. Because I don't want to go into something else. We'll say that next week. Y'all will. Let me see. Don't worry. Don't you worry, Zion. Y'all will. We don't we don't say it. Uh they say the first one was Yahshua the Lamb of God, the Lamb worth it. The second title was what? Uh Yehoshua, the Lamb worth it. Today's lesson is Yahweh Shai, the Lamb worth it. Who wanna take a guess what next week gonna be if y'all will? Huh? Jesus. The lamb worth it. If his will, it's gonna be the title next week. We're gonna bring some stuff together. Hmm? But I wanted to show what he has uh, allowed me to, to bring out some things to show how uh, how we need to be a slave to him. And how we really, you know, when you're slaving them, you're giving up, you're giving up your 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 your, your, your rights uh, uh, freely in order to serve him. Like in Leviticus, I think that chapter was it, Exodus 21, I think. Hmm? You was free to go, but you say, No, I'm coming by because I love you. 
you, you, you paid the price. Now I'm here to, to show you that I appreciate the price you paid for me by giving you my life. Use me at your will. See, this is what, what I've been saying, that young rich ruler, right? He, he, he had opportunity, watch this. The scripture we read earlier that the Messiah, he was rich and he became poor for our sake, right? So that we become, that we could become rich. See, th th that young rich ruler, he missed it. He had an opportunity to become poor. He was rich in a world, world sense, but he had an opportunity to become poor. Well, um, he, he had an opportunity to lose his riches according to his world in order to become rich, huh? He had the opportunity, but he didn't want it. He walked away sorrowful. Wasn't worth it. He wanted to keep the riches of this world. He wanted to keep his own. He, he didn't want to follow the Messiah. He was a ruler. He wanted to be a master of his own self. He didn't want to follow the ruler. Huh? He didn't want to follow the master. He wanted to continue to uh, do what he wanted to do. But don't know he missed out on. He, 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 the Messiah said, give up your riches. Sell everything you got and follow me. Hmm? Come follow the real master. Come under my authority. He couldn't do it. Zion, we all had that same opportunity. May not be able to give up no money, but can you give up your pride, your selfishness, your stubbornness, your ego, your bitterness, your anger, your rage, huh? your bite biting. You, you, what they say, you, you got to have it my way. Self-righteousness, can you give that up in order to follow the master? Are you willing to give that up in order to follow the master? Or do those things make you think that you're rich? Ephesians 3, well, I just want to read this one part. Of it. it says, um, it says, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Call yourself a prisoner, a prisoner of the Messiah. Can we say with full assurance that you are a prisoner of the Messiah? Can you really say with your whole heart and say, I'm a slave for the Messiah? Can we really look ourselves in the mirror, think in our own hearts, and really say that we're prisoners of the Messiah, that I'm a slave to the Messiah? You can say it, but are you really, are we really walking in it? Have we really given up our own desires, our own will, in order to satisfy him and do what he say do? For free. He gonna get your reward. He ain't gonna, I mean, Messiah ain't gonna have you down here giving up everything you got. He already said he gonna give you double. Well, you know, he said a hundredfold, didn't he? A hundredfold. So you ain't doing nothing for free. You can get a hundredfold, but you shouldn't do it just for the hundredfold. We should be doing it because what? We love him. We want to please him. We're going to close it out. First Corinthians uh, 1 6. You got some? I, um, I said one. First Corinthians six. You want to be a friend of his, you have to do what he tell you to do. Or you ain't no friend. And you could be a high servant, huh? Go ahead and put that work in. Do your little preaching, do your little singing, your little dancing, your little teaching. Hmm? Get your little pay, get your payment right now on the earth. Be a hired servant to the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people hired servants anyways. Getting a reward right now. They ain't really slaves to them. Just enjoy, just enjoy the, 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 the payments. Man, you know something else, Zion? What, what's the, the, you know what? Being a slave to the Messiah, what other benefits is better than that? This is the greatest benefit package you can have. You know, you know, man, look, I've been working for myself like 15, whatever years, right? 
Man, I go get this little job, this little thing, and they talking about some benefits. I ain't never think about no benefits. No, talking about leg, what the leg talking about uh, what that uh, a full pension. Look, pension. I don't care nothing about no pension. Look, benefit pocket or whatever. I want that bread right now. You understand what I'm saying? But I get the whole thing. You set yourself up for the future and all this type of stuff. Man, we already got the greatest benefit package you you can ever want. This better than any pension plan out there. What what benefit package you could think of than better than being a slave and a messiah? Even though you may not be getting the, the benefits right, we get the benefits right now. He's waking us up. He's giving us strength. We can see. We can hear. We can smell. Hallelujah. We can we can uh, get to uh, praise him. We can, so you're getting paid right now. You're getting paid right now. The fight that we can even, even crowd to him, that we can love and we can love on each other. So you are getting paid. You know how I many the people don't have a hunger and a thirst for him? But just think of the, the, the benefits afterwards, after this life. Think about the benefits after this life that we're going to receive. Man, ain't no benefits of the world after you retire compared to this benefit right here to doing this work. Can anybody think of a better benefit pocket? Are there any better pension plans out there? You know any better pension? What you what that job you work at? Uh, Capital One. They they got a good payment pl pension plan. Progressive, whatever it was. Nah, none, no job in the world got benefits like it is for being a slave to the Messiah. Boy, don't forfeit your benefits, Zion. Do not forfeit your benefits by trying to be a slave to sin or serving yourself. Because you only get, you, we, we only, you only cashing out, you only going to cash out if you continue to stay in him. Hmm? If you walk this walk out. I almost want to go somewhere else, but we're going we to get to end it. Something just came to my mind, boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boy, first Corinthians 6. I'll start at verse 20 is what I'm gonna end with. But we're gonna start at verse. Because the coach he brought this out early, but we bought with the price. We're gonna end with that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start it at verse uh verse 20. Let's see. I'm gonna start at verse 14. Hmm. Yeah. It says, and God have both raised up the Lord and what were also raised up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye, know ye not that the that which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth without the body. But he that committed fornication uh, sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So this is why we must understand we are slaves. To your Howard shot. You must understand this because you've been bought with a price. You don't own your own body. Don't belong to you. But you have to choose to become a servant, a slave to him. Hmm? So you can fulfill holiness and righteousness in this body by being submitted under his will, by having faith in him, being obedient to his word. 
we missed it. The ancestors missed it when they came out of Egypt. He was setting them up to be, be, be slaves or be obedient, but everybody would see the benefits of, uh, of being servants to the Almighty. And he was going to send them out to, to go teach the whole world how to become servants. It's going to happen. And now he's raising up an army of people, men and women, hallelujah, that's going to uh, uh, walk this thing out. Both Jew and Gentile that's going to be submitted under the truth. That's all I got for now. What you got? What's up? You can look it over real quick. Look at 1 Corinthians 7, verse 20 through 24. Let me read 1 Corinthians 7. What you say? Verse 20 through 24. Verse 20 through 24. 1 Corinthians 7, 20 through 24. Let's read it. You, you say 22, 24? Verse, it's 1 Corinthians 7, verse 20. Okay, do 24, got you. All right. It says, let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Art, art thou being a servant, care not for it. But if thou mayest be free, use it rather. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant. Yeah, but, but he, for he is called in the Lord being a servant. And that word, they're going to be slave too. Guarantee is doulos. Is the Lord's freeman. Huh? Likewise, also, good scripture. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is Christ's servant. You're Christ's slave. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Beautiful script. Brother, let every man where he is called there and abide with Christ. Beautiful stuff. And yeah. I said that because remember Mitch Meek said she was having an issue. Yeah. With, like the, I guess like the maybe the definition of freedom or yeah. free. So maybe with given this, maybe yeah. sort of open the, the, it up to her because it is freedom and liberty in yeah. Christ. We just we got freedom and liberty like Adam and Eve, but it's it's we got instructions. It's house rules. Yeah. You got a law of the commandments that you have to keep. We free. But you can't do what you want to do. We was uh at the uh, man at the uh, at the Chinese church, right? I don't know the name of it, but we was telling them how we live in the the restricted community. Some of us, right? And y'all was speaking to me, speaking through me, uh, telling them how we we live in the restricted communities. And we paying for this house that you live in. And Eve, you can't even do what you want to do. People come telling me I couldn't park my work truck wherever I want to park it. Man, y'all crazy. But that's the rules. And I'll be with sometimes I break the rules. Because my mind, man, I'm paying for this thing. But you got to follow the rules. Out, you know? But my point is, you paying for this house. And they telling you, you can't do what you want to do. And we're going to think when you're in the family of the Lord, hmm, when you become a slave to Christ, you can do what you want to do with your own body and you ain't even pay for it. You've been bought with a price. You don't get to make the decision of what you want to do. It's already set up. He already laid out all the laws and commandments on how we should live within the body. You, you don't, it, it, look, the whole thing, one of the things I think that messed stuff up, please don't get me wrong when I say this, we do have a personal relationship with him, right? But this personal relationship is going to collectively put everybody on one accord. Your little personal relationship is not going to give you some insight that's going to have you doing anything contrary to the community. If it does, you're off. Now, your personal relationship may tell you to go to bed at 8 o'clock. That don't mean I got to go to bed at 8 o'clock, but you have a, a, a collective thing that's going to bring us on one accord. Because all the slaves are going to be on one accord to what the master say. You understand what I'm saying? He, he's not a respected person. So we just got to be patient and do be a, be, be a slave and learn to give up. Hallelujah. You, we, we, it's a, it's a, man, I'm learning it. I ain't got it. I'm learning it. 
how to submit totally to him, how to be a slave to him. But every now and then, you know, that flesh, hey, that flesh will uh, pop off. Want to want to serve my own self, my own my own desires, my own mind. But we're learning how to, I'm learning how to kill this flesh and stay submitted on His will. Hallelujah! And I and I pray that we all can do the same thing. Learn how to submit yourself, your cert, your, your bodies over to Him. Okay, let's be a slave to Christ. Hallelujah! That's all I got. Um, let's get this Hebrew roll call in. Hallelujah! See what the family got today. Hallelujah. Let's kick it off with uh, let's go with the Walker family. What y'all got? Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> we all in here just getting the word. Hallelujah. Good stuff. Everything good. Blessings, blessings. Yes. Let's get the Felicity's family in here. Bat Shalom, family. Love y'all. We ain't got nothing. Hallelujah. All praise to the king. Trent, what you got? Shabbat Shalom, family. I don't have much today. Just thank you for the word. Like I always say, good end to the week, good start to the week. I hope everybody has a good one. Hallelujah. Brother Michael. Is that Brother Mike Rima? Shabbat Shalom. Oh, that, may, that may be my, my Michael. He's <laughs> What's up, big Mike? <laughs> the student, he and his grandmother are listening in, but Shabbat Shalom. Chief Moray, Chief Chef. He's a chef as well because you were serving it up. <laughs> serving serving this manna from heaven because we're not living by bread alone anymore. This is next Amen. level. And the, um, the revelation that you just gave, it makes me want to examine it through what Galatians 4 says, really, with the um, a totally new lens. When you talked about Hagar, and um, this uh, King James Version has Agar, but the whole um, thing of us being born of the free woman and how you had us look at what freedom and liberty being free really is, and knowing that this covenant doesn't... Um, there's rules associated there's like mm -hmm. with any there's terms conditions that make the covenant work and one aspect of the whole character of servanthood and i think this is the point that made me excited um as servants is that you know if you think about loyalty right servants after the order of hamashiach or yahweh shai mm -hmm. you know we have a we have a next level thing of of we don't just serve. We 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 defend this. This is our lives. It's like I'm not saying we're a gang, but we bought in, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we're always uh, like any smart employer or, or sorry, employee rather. You know, they'd be like, mm -mm, as soon as that next come up it is available, I'm bouncing. I'm out. Mm -hmm. We have the privilege of, you know, coming to the defense of our relationship to our jobs as Hamashiach's servants. And um, we do a lot more than, you know, uh, any normal other relationship, which is why looking at this the way you gave it to us, it's like, yeah, <laughs> now I see the difference. Servant, slave, involuntary, all that. This is uh, this is a, um, just one of those massive, um, uh, it, it, multi-dimensional ways of, of how we are now in in a um free but yet we're we're bound to him um mm -hmm. relationship and yeah beyond friends to me we, we are his agents on so mm -hmm. many levels so hallelujah to yahweh shai and thank you family this was a wonderful lesson hallelujah all praise to the king like that can an ambassador if you're an ambassador, the whole Bible is about love and slave talk. That's what it's about, right? Look, an ambassador, can he, can an ambassador go to another country and go do what he want to do? He already sent orders to do from one country to another 
and he sent orders to, to follow directions. Hmm? And, and that's I was gonna touch, but we ain't gonna touch it this week. That Galatians 4 is is when we really understand that bond woman, that free woman. You are slave to one. You are slave to one. Either you've been born, uh, all of us have been born from below, but are you born from above? Where the free woman is talking about talk, talking about the, the spirit. And they ain't talking about no females either. Some brothers are talking about I think they're talking about a female. We got to be born again. Hmm? Not of the flesh. But hallelujah, good stuff for Coachy. Let's get our mama, uh, Mother Barbara J. Johnson. Uh, all praises. Let's get a uh, a uh, uh, Coachy Monica. Oh, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a lot today. I just thought that today's message was interesting, and it kind of went along with my reading this morning. I was reading um, Philemon. And right. in Philemon, it speaks about um, o Onesimus, who had mm -hmm. ran away from his master. And he ended up um, running into Paul and serving Paul while he was in chains. Yeah. And Paul sent him back to his master and asked his master to accept him not only as a slave, but as a brother. Um, mm -hmm. And so I thought that was very interesting that that was my reading this morning. Not that I read that because of the title it just happened to be <laughs> in the course of what i was reading but um it's it's interesting how the most high works like that yes um, that's all that i had that was i just thought that was very interesting that those two things um came together today and how it correlated with today's message beautiful philemon definitely go right into this right it go right with it hmm? right into it um Beautiful stuff. Let's get uh Willie or Dean. Would you like to say anything? Or if you can speak on it. everyone. Happy Saturday. Uh I just thank the Lord that uh he uh made me out of slave. Or oh, I, I surrendered to him. And I'm so happy, I'm so glad to be a slave. Not sure, I feel like I can't express it. I'm totally free. I feel so good. I'm set free, even though I'm a servant, I'm enslaved. I wouldn't have it any any other way, and uh, I could never repay him. If I had a million different willies to try to pay back to be a slave for him forever, I could never repay him for his love and what he done for me. Hallelujah! Happy Sabbath day. Hallelujah. Love. It. Thank you. Love you. Brother Shemaya Yahoo, man, we about to close it out. We're glad to have you on. We're going to give you the opportunity to say hallelujah or what you got. All praises, all praises, all praises. But I, yeah, I've been busy, but, you know, I've been trying to run in and catch y'all guys in and out, you know, back and forth in Memphis and back and forth to here. But um, praise the most high, man. Uh, keep on doing the work that's required. You know, let him guide your steps and he'll always protect you. Uh, say Shabbat Shalom to the family. Um, hey, keep it up, Art. Blessing, blessing. Good to have you on, man. Give your wife our love. Hallelujah. All praise the will. Yes. Ema, what you got? Hallelujah. I don't have a whole lot more to add. This is definitely something I'm going to have to continue to dig into and, um, and actually study um, out a little bit more. Um, I do... I do like Monica. I appreciate the fact that the Most High always lines us all up. Um, I was just talking to my sister this morning and was saying the very same thing about people not wanting to come to Hamashiach because of pride. Um, they won't humble themselves, um, but that we should continue to pray for them because, of course, we want we want as many as can um, to be into the kingdom with us. We don't want it to just be us. It's not about selfishness and saying I got it, but all the family. We want the family to come in. Um, but I I did. I uh, want to note something else to it that when you ask, you know, well, what are we serving the most high for? Why would we want to be a servant, you know, to him? And it, what is our pay? And so, you know, most of us are serving him because we just want to see him. You know, we just want to be in his presence 
when he comes back. It's not about, you know, yeah, it, it says that, you know, you'll get a crown of life. You know, there's all these crowns you get. There's, you know, the streets that are paved with gold, your own mansion. There's all these things. But when you actually talk to one of us or we talk to each other, our main desire is I just want to sit at his feet, just talk to him, just, you know, to be able to glean from him. So you want to serve him just so you can get back to him so that you can be with him. And so that to me is the ultimate payment um, that we can receive is just to be able to spend that time with the one who has done all things for us, you know, throughout our lives, even before we knew him, before we gave our lives to him, before we surrendered our life unto him, he still was and still is and has always been there for us and protected us and kept us. And so, you know, it just, it just is more of I just want to give back to you what you've given to me. And like Uncle Willie said, we don't even have it. We can't give back enough. We don't have what it requires to pay the payment that's been paid for us. Mm -hmm. But just to be able to sit at his feet, to me, is just the most amazing um, thing that we could receive from him in payment back for just serving him, being a slave unto him for the rest of our lives. Hallelujah. Well said. Glory. And, and, and I want to say this too. This hopefully this can encourage us. When the Messiah said the harvest is plentiful, right? We gotta understand the time we're in right now. You know, after the harvest, they would go harvest everything up, but then there was still some stuff left on the field we would, we would have to glean, right? That's in our book of Rufa tell you about that gleaning, right? So we in this season where, man, the harvest, people have been picking up the harvest, getting the people. It is, it's like gleaning time right now. So it's going to be far in between that you find people who really want to serve them. So just be encouraged that, hey, it may be one, two people that you meet once a month or something, if that. But you just got to be the light. You understand what I'm saying? Just be the light and do what you got to do. And uh, when you see somebody or he leaves somebody, Plant that word in, but it's, it's gleaning time right now. Uh, let's let's close it out with Mora Mitchell Lee. What you got for us, Akoti? Shabbat shalom, everyone. Um, wow, this this um is a continuation of everything that Abba has been talking to me about this week. Um, so thank you for being obedient and and providing the message, and thank Abba for just putting the things on our hearts that need to be dealt with. Um, at the end of the day, slaves obey. You obey. And we all know that according to the scriptures, we're all slaves to something. We are obeying something or more accurately, someone. And there are mm -hmm. only two options, right? We're either obeying Yah or we're being Hasatan. And both slavery whether it's slavery to Yah or slavery to Hasatan requires death. We can either yeah. die to ourselves now, die to our desires, die to our will, die to whatever, and gain eternal life, or we can indulge in the flesh now and then die later. Mm -hmm. But what we understand from the scripture is that everything has a physical and a spiritual connotation. And if we choose to die and follow Yah, we're going to have a um, we're going to have a physical death, and we're going to have a spiritual um, resurrection, right? If we choose to follow and die um, according to Hasetan, we're going to have a um, a physical death. We all die physically eventually, and we're going to have a spiritual death as well. But the understanding that I've gathered from Genesis 2, if we're supposed to look at definitions from things according to the scriptures, death is eternal separation from Yah. Hallelujah. So if you follow Hasetan, you're going to die in a different way than if you die yourself now. If you follow Hasetan, you're going to be eternally separated from Yah. Um, so die now and have eternity with him. Or don't die now and be eternally separated from him. Those are the two options. Hallelujah. Well put, beautiful, beautiful, hallelujah. And that's exactly what happened in that garden. 
disobedience caused them to be separated, caused them to be kicked out of paradise. All they had to do was dress and till to God. Huh? Follow, follow commands. Be, be a servant unto him. Be, be a slave unto your master. Do what he tell you to do. That's it. But when you want to do what you want to do, eternal separation is on the table. But we thank the almighty uh, for repentance. Uh, that we can repent. We can ask for forgiveness. Uh, we can come through his son to, to try to, you know, get, get back right. But um, we're going to get ready to close it out. Um, man, I just seen, uh, <laughs> we're going to give him a chance to speak. I think uh, Elder Mackey, uh, you banks, you about to get ready to close it out, Elder. But uh, we'll definitely give you a chance to say shalom, hallelujah. Yeah, I, man, I had a long talk with my son this morning. I'll tell you about it. Yes, sir. All right, good to have you on, though. Really? Yeah, all right. All right, yes, sir. But um, now we, we're gonna get ready to wrap it up, Zion. Um, we're gonna pray out. Did you want to say anything? Oh, he good. Uh, we're gonna get ready to pray out. And uh, again, thank you for your time. And uh, let, let's just become slaves. Let's 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 give up our own will, hmm? so we can become rich in the Messiah. Hallelujah, Abba. We thank you, Hallelujah, for um, for allowing us this time. For strengthening us, for, 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 hallelujah, for showing us a perfect example on how to do it, what it is you called us to do. We ask that the joy of seeing the Messiah be put in our heart, that let us understand that this is our true reward to behold him, that, that nothing on this earth outside of him doesn't matter. We just want to please you. Give us a heart and give us the strength and obedience to, to please you. Hallelujah, that we can follow the perfect example of our King, our Lord, our Savior. We, we pray for, for our brothers and sisters who could not make it on. Hallelujah, we pray that the word would go out to them and the word would take root and grow up in them as well so we can become one family. We also pray again, hallelujah, for, for, the, uh, for the Jackson household. We pray for healing over that household right now. We ask that you strengthen their body right now. Hallelujah. That uh, no, no pestilence will have any power over the household. We also pray again for uh, Brother Brian uh, Smith that, that, that he will be healed for your glory. And we again, we send our peace to the family and comfort to the family. Hallelujah. And we, 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 we pray for that report to come back as a, as a healing to his body. And not just that again, as I said, a healing to the mind, healing to the soul. Hallelujah. We thank you and we love you. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. We're going to close it out with 1 Corinthians 1.10. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Man, love y'all. Um, let's, let's keep going and, and don't stop. And it's a blessing to be inside the house. One more thing I want to say before I let it, before I click and get off here. It came to me. You remember what the, uh, the particle son, they called him particle son, what he said when he came into his senses, he realized that even the higher servants had it better than he had. it. So, it's levels to it, okay? We can get to the point where we become his friend, but we still got to have that, that, that heart of a servant, that slave mentality where we've given up all of our rights, all of our will, and submitting to the king of the house. All right? Love y'all. Uh, be at peace. Stay in shalom. Get some rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.